It's Monday, January 23rd, 2023. This day with a podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com. Also being brought to you by YDOT. When there's ice and snow, take it slow. Well, folks, get ready for a lot of winter. Short term, long term. It's going to be chilly. It's going to be unsettled. While the next, let's say, five or six days won't bring anybody a lot of snow, we are going to continue to have chilly temperatures, and we're going to have that northwest wind aloft that we talked about late last week, where when the winds come in from the northwest aloft, you have little weather disturbances come through, little clipper systems. So you're going to get occasional snow showers and flurries on the plains. A little bit more snow will fall in the high country. Again, it's not a, a way to make it snow a lot. But off and on, this week and into the weekend, there's going to be some snow shower and flurries at times with cold temperatures. And then there's a bigger push of cold and snow coming this weekend and in the next week. There's likely going to be an Arctic front coming in sometime into Montana, let's say during the day Friday, into Wyoming and South Dakota Saturday, then pushing south into Colorado by Saturday night and into Sunday. There'll be much colder temperatures with that Arctic push, and there will be a little bit more in the way of widespread snow with that Arctic push this weekend. Snow and the cold is going to really kind of co-mingle as we go into the rest of January, and it looks like well into February, we're going to see a lot of cold in the central and western areas of the United States. And yes, down even into the desert southwest. This cold will settle into Arizona, New Mexico, and the Great Basin. It's the western United States that will be the coldest here for the next 7 to 10 days out to the next 14 days. We'll start off today with this upper level low down into Arizona, bringing the desert southwest more colder than normal conditions and shower activity. This system is kind of moisture starved, so it looks very impressive on the maps but it just doesn't have a lot to work with. Nonetheless, as it swings through, some scattered areas of light snow fell Sunday night into Monday morning, kind of in this area here, and that area of light snow will move south and east. A little bit of a heavier snow and rain pattern will be found down into Arizona, New Mexico, down into West Texas. Then you can see in the colder air behind the system, some scattered areas of snow showers and flurries a little bit more of a serious situation in terms closer to that upper low. And then you can see the mountains of Arizona, New Mexico, getting more snow and maybe into the San Juans of Southwest Colorado, a bit more snow as well. So that is the first system to deal with this week. This is for Wednesday. The high pressure configuration in the Eastern Pacific means the door is open to Canada. So cold air just has access to the Western United States, nothing to stop it. And that Northwest wind flow will bring these little ripples, little small weather disturbances through. It doesn't look like much, but do you see these little bends right here in these black lines where there's looks like there's a kink? There's a kink there, there's a kink there, there's probably another kink forming up there. This is that northwest flow aloft that bring these weather disturbances through. And what they do is they occasionally produce snow showers and flurry activities they come on by. And that cold air loft and the cold air at the surface has easy access along and east of the divide. By Sunday, notice we have this big gray blue area here, very cold air associated with this. And there's kind of a tongue of that associated cold air coming in, stretching back into the Pacific Northwest. So there is going to be right here along the U.S. Canadian border, Arctic air in here by late Friday into Saturday into Montana, then into the Dakotas, Wyoming, and further south, later Saturday, Saturday night into Sunday. And that cold air is going to be driven in by even colder air coming in behind it. Again, there's the ridge in the Pacific, there's the ridge up into the North Atlantic. And that overspreads cold air. So you can see the Arctic air by Sunday morning is pushing into the Midwest and look at across the Northern Plains, the Northern Rockies, the blue and the purples there showing very, very cold temperatures. So by the weekend, we could be talking about sub-zero temperatures. And that push of Arctic air, this is that heavier snow that'll be associated with that Arctic push right here as we get on into the weekend. So while there's going to be not tons and tons of snow, Arctic air with just much water will produce several inches of snow as the Arctic boundary pushes south. So for central and northern Wyoming, South Dakota, northern Nebraska, Montana, northern areas of Wyoming, 
up into Yellowstone Park, Jackson Hole there, this is gonna be a good snowmaker. And we're gonna see this Arctic air and this moisture push south during the day Sunday into Monday. And you can see there's a pretty good band of snow with that Arctic push. So livestock interest, anybody with travel plans this weekend, you need to kind of watch this weather there. These are the forecasted low temperatures by Sunday morning. So you can see the gray, anything that's gray is zero or colder. So you can see some pretty darn cold air up here into Canada, but we're talking about single digits to maybe sub-zero temperatures all the way to Denver, maybe by Sunday morning. We'll see how far it pushes. And as we always have with these Arctic boundaries, the always the question you have, is it deep enough to get over the continental divide? And right now the sub-zero temperatures are east of the divide, but west of the divide, we're just gonna have to watch and see if there's a big enough push of that colder air to get over the hump, so to speak. By Wednesday afternoon of next week, this is by February 2nd, you can see another push of Arctic air comes in. So there's nothing warm, remotely warm, at least relative to average. That nice January we thought we had, this really isn't gonna be taking place for the rest of the month and into early February. This is 10 days out. Notice this large blue and green area here. Basically, you, if you wanna call it the polar vortex, we can. This is just a huge pocket of very cold Arctic air that's just gonna spin around and really be centered over the central, north central, and northwest areas of the United States. And as long as we have the bookends of high pressure in the Eastern Pacific and the North Atlantic, this Arctic air really has nowhere to go other than spin around and occasionally take dips south into the lower 48 states and certainly into Canada. So this is nothing but a very cold signal. These are temperatures 10 days from now. And this purple, green, and blue areas, if this continues, there will be an east and southeastward push of that Arctic air into the first week of February into the rest of the US. So a lot of cold signals rain and we're gonna show you some of these teleconnections, oscillations that we showed you when we had that Arctic outbreak in December. The Eastern Pacific oscillations kind of off the charts cold, as you can see here at the end of the month, getting very much into a negative phase and staying in a negative phase all the way through the first seven days of February. The Arctic oscillation also is going into a negative phase and the North, the Pacific North, North American oscillation, also known as the PNA, which is a cold signal for the Pacific Northwest and the Rockies. That's in a negative phase as well. So what we're seeing is everything lining up to a period of cold weather in the short term, cold weather in the long term, with basically another big Arctic buildup of cold air. It's taken several weeks to build up again, but here it is. And it's gonna be affecting especially the central and western United States. So keep those jackets and mittens handy. Have yourself a good Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.